Bem, antes de eu começar, eu realmente não me lembro se era para dar uma palestra em português ou em inglês. Eu fiz as laudas em inglês, vou dar em inglês, tem gente que... Mas eu acho que não vai ter tradução. Enfim. Uh, e assim, eu estou meio torto, porque eu estou com um torcicolo danado faz dois dias, então se eu ficar meio torto, vocês não levem a mal. Uh, ok? Uh, Relo e Veron. Uh, let's talk about security. So, the talk is understanding plan security. Uh, well, Plony is you known for being a quite safe CMS, but something that bothers me, uh, bu bugs me a little is uh, a lot of people, especially here in Brasilia, works with Plone, trust Plone, but they do not understand how uh, security stuff is made inside Plone code. It's a little bit, you know, complex to understand the, the, the way how things are, are done. But the general opinion about Plone is Plone is very safe. Plone is better than other PHP CMS. But I really would like to, to try to explain you, uh, at least try to explain you why it happens, why Plone is more secure than other platforms. Before that, let's, let's oh sorry. Uh, before that, let, let's see some arguments. I, I, I listen. Uh, some people say that Plone is less used and tested than other solutions. It's common to, 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 to listen that from people that use PHP. So <laughs> it, it's interesting because we have that uh, argument uh, saying that Given of eyeballs, all bugs are shallow. Or, more formally, uh, if you have enough people looking to your code, you probably have a better code, a code that is more tested and more uh, secure. It's not uh, uh, something that everybody agrees. There is a lot of discussion about about this argument. Especially from uh, some guys that this one I, I don't remember to, to read him, but Robert Glass uh, in Facts and Fallacies about software engineer uh, says that this mantra is probably a fallacy. Really? So I, I will not try to, to focus my presentation on, the, on this kind of philosophical stuff. I will try to be a little bit more technical. Usually I, I, I have said that people from Plone use a slide with some graphs. And in practice, uh, say that our project is very secure because we have a lot of people working on that, uh, doing uh, code reviewing and so on. It's interesting because we have a, a really good uh, security track record. But how many of you actually think that it's enough to say that Plone is really secure? It's not enough. Just because you have a really good track record, you cannot say that. So obscurity, it's the point here because uh, it's difficult to trust something that you do not understand. And people that decide what technology will be used usually do not understand how it's made. It's, it's something really, really delicate, a really, really delicate point. So my personal opinion about this is Plano Security comes from the Python and Zopi wisdom. Somehow, uh, there is a lot of really good people involved on Plone development. And another good uh, reason is 
Python. Python is awesome, really. It's really, really different from Java, for instance. Well, uh, another important subject when it, we talk about security is understand the concept of security code development. Uh, security is not something that you develop code and try to fix after. Uh, it's much more interesting trying to create a software that by design is more secure. So who of you know what is a WASP? OK. Uh, WASP is the Open Web Application Security Project. They are a kind of, uh, uh, they are vendor neutral. So they are not associated with any, any security company. And they, they are really focused on security development practices. So I will try to show you uh, what they call the top 10 from OASP. A raw plone uh, try to implement uh, its features following that top 10 uh, from OASP. So this year we have a new release of OASP top 10. It's not that different from the earlier versions, but it's interesting to, to, to say some words about that risks. Well, that, that are security risks. The first one, injection, is my favorite to, to talk about because it's really difficult to do injection in Plown. SCAL injection is impossible because we don't have XL. And in practice, uh, the vast majority of pro security problems that you have in PHP applications is usually something related to SQL injection. But there are some other risks that Plone tries to manage. I think it's, it's okay to try to talk about them. Uh, okay, that one already said. Okay, this one. Uh, broken authentication and system management. Uh, who of you have worked some day with PHP? Don't be, sh don't be, <laughs> don't be shy. <laughs> well, in PHP, or in other technologies like uh, .NET and, and sometimes Java also, uh, you need to, to be very careful about the way how uh, session management is made and the authentication is made. Especially because uh, this is something that the, the developer, the integrator, needs to be concerned about. It's something that needs to be done manually by who is writing the application. And when you need to do something manually, or you are very careful, or you, or of course, you have troubles. On Plone, it's not that, that way. On Plone, you have something called Plone Pass that defines uh, interfaces. And when you need to create something, create a new plugin to do, to do the, the authentication, what you need to do is create a code that develops that interface, something like this. This kind of measure is interesting and makes the, the, whole, uh, in, the whole infrastructure of Plone much more um, concise and it is important to avoid security issues. Here is just a pseudo code. It's not a real code. If you try to understand here, it's just the implementation of authenticate credentials that one on a set of interfaces of Plone Pass. This interface is just 
just receives the 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 credentials login and password and says if this login and password is correct. Um, in practice, it's done by this method. That's not codified here. And it does some cache too. So if somebody asks you, do you know how Plano defines the authentication authorization, how it's made? It's not that simple to explain that. I was, try I was uh, discussing with Enrique. I, I don't know if Enrique is here. Enrique is a Django guy uh, that, that is attending the conference. And he's very good on Django, but knows nothing about Zelp. And it's very difficult to explain to a, to a guy like him, that's a very smart guy, how Plony does the authorization and authentication. Because it's not trivial. Well, I'll try to, to explain you. Probably the vast majority of you are no, somehow used to, to this subject. But I realize that there are people here from Brazil that probably don't, does not know how it works. I'll try to, to explain you the general, the general rules. Of course, you have some scenarios, especially sub component architecture, that, that I will not explain here. But the general idea is, is more or less explained here. So Plone uses the Zulp security structure. So uh, you have users, uh, and these users, you uh, receive roles on contexts. Everything on Zulp are is controlled by context. So the generic rule uh, says that when this user is trying to run something, he is running a method on this context. This, this method is somehow described in a class. And this method should follow some rules. The general rules are the method must have a doc string, should not begin with an underscore, and have a permission declaration. Permission should be private, public, or somehow protected. But th this is your general rule. So if the method does not have a doc string, it's private. You should not be able to run this method directly from the, the, the get. You know, you, can, you could not call this method directly. It could, it, of course, this method is there. It, sh it could be used by another component and so on. But if it does not have a doc string, it, it should not be public. The very same with the underscores. If it's something starts with an underscore, it's private. If it, ha if it has a, pri a private permission or my favorite ones, <laughs> If the user tries to access the method and do not have an analog hole defining a permission on the context where the method is being executed. Fuck. Complex. Well, rights are always granted by roles. It's, it's a little bit strange when we listen to this by the first time, especially for new users, because users usually think that rights are granted by user. It's not true. Rights are granted by roles, and the users will receive roles on contexts. And Plony has something that is not Zop specific, but it's plone specific. That's the concept of group. Group is just a, a way to to try to to make the the user administration a little bit easier. So group is just a set of users. You can uh, you can put a set of users inside a group, and instead of put roles for a user, you can put roles for a group, and everybody inside this group will receive these, uh, these roles. It's, it's just um, an abstraction to make the privileges administration a little bit easier. So after all that, 
the first question is, who defines the permissions? So we have users, holes, groups, everything is, context is made to be contextual. Uh, and who defines the, the, the permissions? On Zope, the permissions are user defined on Zope root, on plon root, the, the plon object, where we have the general definition of our permissions. But the content, the content objects will have its own permissions, and these permissions will change when the information change. For instance, when you have a new item, this new, this new item probably is, is probably created as private. You pass by a review process, and just after being reviewed, this new item will be published. The act of publish something is defined in our workflow that, in practice, is this. It's not sharp, but here you have permissions, and on the columns you have holes. So every time an, an object change its state, the workflow definition is a state machine. So if you, every time the, the object changes its, its state, the new roles table is applied over the object. It's important because it means that the end user does not manage permissions. The whole, arch the whole security architecture of ZOP is made to avoid the user being responsible by managing permissions. That's important. However, it's complex to understand by new developers. It's, it's really complex. Some, some, a par part of my job here in Brazil is doing trainings, trainings for other developers. And I have been doing that for years. And this kind of subject is always something that people have doubts. It's not really easy to explain and show in practice how it works. But with proper training, you see that people really like the, the, the whole solution. Mostly because it's safe, it's very secure, because you are, you are removing from the hands of the user, the end user, the responsibility of security management, and you are creating a way to keep your content uh, behaving in a controlled way, let's say that. Uh, okay. I think that's the general idea. I'm not sure if I was clear enough. Well, uh, okay, that's just one point from the top 10. Uh, of course, I will not talk about the, the 10 points. It's, it's just impossible for a one hour talk. But what else Plan does for you? Well, Plan does a lot of things, or at least Plan tries to do a lot of things. Uh, the first is cross-site scripting protection. Uh, do you know what, what cross-site scripting is? Probably the, Matthew knows, of course. But, <laughs> well, uh, Basically, cross-site uh, scripting is a risk that defines uh, a common attempt, a common attack to, to try to grab uh, user credentials. So it's basically a manipulation of, a par of parameters that you send to the application. You send a, a, a variable to the application. This, this variable is not escaped correctly, and when the, the template uses that variable somehow, it enables you to inject JavaScript, for instance, um, 
show the, the user rights to uh, an attacker. It's, it's not that uncommon. It's very common on some environments like banks and, and you know, applications that are really uh, target in, in, in this kind of attack. But Plony tries to, to avoid this kind of attack, uh, filtering almost all the input that is stored in the application. So that's the reason, that's the, the, the main reason that we do not allow uh, users to type JavaScript code inside content. It's plain stupid, because you cannot trust the end user, because it, it could be used to exploit the application. So Plony, since version 1.0 has uh, uh, content filtering to avoid this kind of stuff. Other, other point that Plony's address is cross-site request, request forging. This one is more tricky, but is used to not to, 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 to steal the credentials of users, but, but somehow to make the user do something that the attacker wants, but the attacker do not, does not have the rights to do, like transfer money from your account to another account. Uh, in practice, it is made using a token, uh, a token in other forms that you avoid uh, a form to being run uh, with forged parameters. And well, during the preparation of this talk, I, I realized that this part of the code was really, really improved in the last months. Last months is, is not exactly true, but since the summer of last year, this, this code was really improved, what's really, really nice. Uh, and somehow, all the order points from top 10 are addressed by Plum. So it's, for who don't, does not know the WASP, uh, I really advise you to, to access their website and read the documentation that they publish there, especially because uh, if you are a developer, you really need to understand what you are doing to not create problems. Okay? Well, Plony does everything except one thing, encryption. <laughs> and we are living an interesting time. And <laughs> NSA is, is really watching us. Uh, especially in Brazil, it's, it's, it's tricky, you know? Every, uh, probably who, who is coming from Foreign countries are not aware of that, but uh, in the last two weeks, you have you had a discussion here in Brazil about Petrobras and being inspired by this security <laughs> stuff from from the United States, and it's interesting because there is only one way to be protected about that: it's encryption. Uh, it's not uh, something that Plony does. It's something that the CISA, CISA me, uh should should set. Uh, it's responsibility of who is going to install and set up the environment to create a really uh, useful encryption solution. In Brazil, we have some some odd stuff about encryption. You have something called, uh, oh my, what's the name? There, there is a, um, when you, you create a, um, an, a, an HTTPS service, you need a certificate. Usually you, you can create your own certificate or buy it for a certificate authority. And in Brazil, some years ago, was created a certificate authority uh, that was uh, the official certificate authority of the government. It's okay, it's interesting to have something like that, especially in times like this. 
But it's interesting because this certificate authority is not default on any browser. So if you are using Mozilla or if you are using Internet Explorer, it's a problem. I was uh, researching about this subject because I think it's, it's important nowadays. And happily, I think that it is changing on Firefox. It's probably, it's, it's going to be uh, part of Firefox in the next few months. It's under um, auditory. I, I don't know the right, the right term, but well, it's being, it, it's, it's walking. It's going to, to happen someday. Well, uh, crypto encryption is a really, really hard subject. There is a lot of math involved. But for who is going to develop, develop uh, proxies with SSL or TLS, I really recommend to use this validator here. It's interesting because after you set up your server, it's possible to use that, that validator to verify if your certificate is really uh, it's correctly set or not, or if you have on art problems. Another interesting point is forward secrecy. It's kind of new subject, but it's important. Okay, I will not talk, I will not talk about that, but are good tips. Uh, okay, I, will, I I don't have enough time to talk about everything. I have more 25 slides, so I need to cut some things. So let me try to summarize everything I said until now. So first, injection. We don't have that injection. Uh, A2, we have a really good solution for that. A3, you have a filtering. Uh, A4 makes no sense on ZOP. A5, uh, security misconfiguration is directly related to planning hotfix. So it's a responsibility from who is using Plone to be aware about security announcements and install the hotfix. OK, don't be lazy. Plone hotfix, OK, what, what the fuck is that? Plone hotfix usually is a monk in patchy. Because you're not, you are not required to install your whole server because of security fix. You can install something like this. The, 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 part, the, the part here, the first part is um, a hotfix that removes the doc string of a, of a method. Did you remember I said that something that does not have a doc string is not public? It's private. So it's a, it's a way to do that by code. Here is just the, the test. Okay? Here I have a class with doc string. I, I get a pointer to the, the function, the doc string, and after that, I remove. And voila, the method is protected without change code that's running. Uh, it's just a simple. Uh, sometimes it's much more complex than that. So A6, uh, sensitive data exposure. Uh, well, on Plone, passwords are protected. Believe me. Uh, however, cryptography encryption is really important. Okay. Uh, A7 makes no sense for Plone. A8 is something covered by Plone. Uh, A9, as I said, it's something that that is a responsibility from the sysadmin. You need to to install the fi the fixes. And A10, of course, makes no sense for Plone. It's based on redirects and forwarding. That's not common Plone. So first, conclusions. Why Plone is secure? Mostly because of the sign decisions. We have no SQL and no SQL injection. That is great. Much, much better than the vast majority of PHP applications. Our AVO input is filtered. We have cross-site request forgery tokens, and we have 
the ZOP machinery, ZOP security machinery that avoid gambiarras. Gambiarras, gambiarras, it's something that it's really tricky. Let's say in English, it would be something like really creative workarounds. Uh, well, uh, sometimes we find security vulnerabilities. We are not perfect, but I think that Plan security team is doing a great job. And by the way, Plony is security because of Python. We, are, we don't have Java, okay? And that's great. So until now, I just said really good things, right? Tips and tricks, because I will say some things that could be improved also. So some, some time ago, it was not default on Plon, but today you have the HTTP only cookie that uh, was added to ZOP on version 2.12, and it's enabled on Plon since 3.0, okay? It's interesting to avoid uh, JavaScript to access the content of cookies. For who, it's important to understand that the, the, the auth authentication token that he used to, to make the browser being logged in on Plone is stored in a cookie. So when you use that cookie option, this cookie could only be accessed, uh, accessed by uh, HTTP. It not could be accessed by JavaScript. And another one is security cookies. It's something important to enable when we are using encryption. Okay. When your cookie is encrypted, it's much more difficult to expose that gradations on network, okay? It's here, okay? Roberto. I'm, I'm pointing to Roberto because Serpro website is running on HTTPS only, and I'm not sure if they are using that, okay? So please verify that. Okay. Uh, what plan could do better? Just some ideas. First, there are some um, uh, headers in HTTP that have been developer, developed for newer browser versions. And as far as I know, they are not supported by Plon yet. So I, I would like to, to discuss that with you because I think that it's not that difficult to, him, to develop that on Plon, and it, it would be really, really great to have. The first one is the X frame. The X frame is, uh, is a way to avoid a frame to be opened inside your applications. It's very common to have on clickjacking attacks. Clickjacking basic, basically is when you are Viewing, viewing a page, and in some parts of that page there are some layers, sometimes that layer are uh, transparent, they have no color, and the user are induced to click something, but they are not clicking to what they are seeing, they are clicking in a layer over, over that and going to Okay, people are saying that I have no time, but I, 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 need, I deserve two more minutes to say that. So it's, it's okay. Who uses that? Twitter, Facebook, Google Plus, because they are targeted by this kind of attack. It's very simple. To do that on Plone is just a matter to, to use the same origin. Same origin is important because of a tiny MCE editor that uses uh, frames. So same origin is, is pretty much fine. 
another tips, uh, click jacking, okay. XXS protection, it's pretty much default, but it's just a way to enforce that it's enabled on, on newer, newer browsers. Strict transport security, this one is very important. This is a way to say to browser that when the page is running on, on, on encryption, everything that the page is loading should be encrypted too. It's, it's a way to avoid uh, session data leaking, okay? Um, another one, uh, X content type options, no sniff. This one is a, a little bit tricky, especially for Internet Explorer, okay? Uh, it's, it's to avoid something that uh, is called download attacks when a user uploads let's say, a PDF file with something inside, and the browser, instead of downloads the file, runs the file like a plugin. And when runs the file, something bad could happen. So it's a way to, to avoid that. You are saying to the browser that, browser, please do not try to guess what this file is, okay? It's strange, but Internet Explorer does that. And my favorite one, content security policies. Content security policies are defined in a W3C uh, recommendation. And on my opinion, it, it will be the, probably the best way to avoid uh, cross-site scripting attacks, okay? The problem is it's very complex. It's not that simple to, to develop, especially when we are using JavaScript from several places. Facebook is using, so it's pretty much fine. Uh, how to use that on Plum today? Well, you need to use something like Apache mod headers to set that headers for you. Plum does not do that, but it's something that we can support in a sprint. It's not that difficult. It's not that complex. That's it. Thank you. I have no, no more time. I, I don't think you have time for questions, but I really would like to thank you for, especially for people that are coming to Brazil, and I know how difficult sometimes it could be to, to, to have a travel for Europe or the United States to come here. So. Thank you, and thank you all for coming. Tom? Yes. Really easy. Like yeah. Exactly. Thank you. Thank you all.